Every guitar player who approaches me looking for help on soloing better or creating more exciting chord progressions has this one thing in common. They have a huge gap in their music theory knowledge. Whether you're avoiding this or just haven't been provided an easy breakdown, I'm telling you right now, it's easy as nasty. Sure, it takes time to get the knowledge to sink in and become secondhand, but the foundation is simple. So simple I could barely even stretch this video out to five tips. The first tip, the very beginning of music theory is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Do we really need to start this simple? I mean, maybe you don't know that there's 12 notes in music with sharps and flats between every note besides E and F and B and C, but what I'll bet most of you certainly don't know is how to find any one of those notes everywhere on the neck. I say A and you can play an A everywhere on the neck without thinking at lightning fast speed. Without the knowledge of what notes you're playing, the music theory knowledge is worthless. To know that a G sharp is a third of E, which is a five chord in the key of A, doesn't mean anything if you can't see the E, the G sharp, and the A in the position that you're in. It's like driving with a blindfold. Sure, you know exactly how to get home, but if you can't see the road, it ain't gonna be pretty. So I'm gonna give you two tips, the Uber shortcut and the ultimate fretboard exercise. The shortcut is simple, of course. The first notes you really wanna know anyways are the names of the chords. So just the notes on the E and the A string, and we could start right here by looking at the dots and saying the alphabet, but starting on G. G, A, B, C, D, E. Boom, and we could kind of assume the sharps and flats from there, and we got it easily laid out. Cool, so that's the start. Now here's the exercise to memorize every single note. Pick a note and play every note below the 12th fret. I choose the note A and play every A from low to high and then back down. Now this may take a really long time, but after a while, you should be able to get it kind of smooth, and this is where the exercise actually starts. Put the metronome on, slow like 60 BPM is probably too fast. Now do the exercise in quarter notes. Gradually increase the metronome and pick the notes in a random order so you don't get caught up in any patterns. All right, now you know what the notes are and more importantly, where the notes are. So the next step is how the notes relate to one another. In music theory, the major scale is a foundation for everything. So we take the scale and number it one from the root and each note to the leading tone seven. Then we fill in the other notes in relation to the major scale. So we could say flat two, flat three, and so on. Every note has 11 other notes that it can harmonize with besides itself, which would be an octave. Each of these intervals has a specific sound that always sounds the same. Some sound nice, some sound nasty, and some sound neutral. If you want to know how to make your chords sound tasty, first you gotta know what makes a chord sound tasty. A chord starts with three notes that are always stacked in thirds. C and E is a third, E and G is a third. Altogether, that makes a C major chord. Now if we lower that E to E flat, it becomes a minor third, and now the whole chord is a C minor. To add to any chord, we simply continue by stacking thirds. After G, it's B. And this fourth note is what makes a seventh chord. And there's three types of seventh chords, a major seven, a minor seven, and a dominant seven. After we add the fourth note to make that chord C major seven, we can keep stacking thirds, and then our chords just add up to C major nine, C major 11, and C major 13. And you can see that 13 is the last number because we used all the notes in the scale. Looking at our major scale, we broke down the notes into numbers and know that we build chords by stacking thirds. And if we take each of the seven notes and make chords of those, they will always be these same chords. Just like each interval has a feel, a major third has a feel, a perfect fifth has a feel, these chords all have a feel in relation to the key center. Four major seven feels like we're moving away from the one chord, and a five seven wants to pull us back into the one chord. Now the main thing to consider with how a chord progression works is to understand the circle of fifths. The interval of a fifth has a very strong pull back to its one. So we exploit this in chord progressions such as a three, six, two, five, one. Each chord is a fifth below the next chord, so it has this natural flow and pull into the next chord. And if we shorten that, well, there's your 2-5-1, one of the most common chord progressions in music. And here lies the core of what music is, tension and resolution. The one chord is resolving, the two, three, four, and six are all a little wavy, not tense, but not chilling in bed. And then you got that five chord and the seven diminished chord, which is basically Jason chasing you through the park with a big old knife. Get home safe, baby. We label the notes and chords with numbers because music is relative. B minor seven, E seven, A major seven has the same flow and feel as D minor seven, G seven, and C major seven. They're both two five ones. And also, when it comes to chords, adding a B to an A major 7 sounds nice because it doesn't create a nasty sounding interval. Major 2nd, major 3rd, perfect 4th, perfect 5th, major 6, minor 7, and major 7 all have varying degrees of pleasant sounds. Whereas a minor 2nd, a minor 6, and a flat 5 sound completely awful. So I could use this perspective of intervals to analyze and understand any scale or chord. 
by looking at E7, the 5 chord in the key of A, there's actually a flat 5 interval in this chord. You know that one interval I said sounds really really bad? But it makes sense because the 5 is the one pulling us back to the 1, and we want that nasty interval to be resolved. And check this out, that flat 5 resolves perfectly into our major 3rd of the 1 chord. If you found this helpful, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any more content that could help you grow as a musician and a guitar player. It won't hurt unless you want it to. Nasty. If you'd like interactive tab with the examples, we would love to have you join our Patreon community where you have access to exclusive lessons, tabs, and jam tracks every week. I hope to see you again real soon. Keep jamming and stay nasty.